Okay, so in this video, we're going to be setting up some calculators to calculate determinants for three by three or four by four or larger matrices. Now, the determinant calculators are going to be determined based on how big the original matrix is. And so you won't be able to use these arbitrarily for like a seven by seven matrix. It's not, this isn't a computer program, but uh, we usually don't have to calculate anything in a linear algebra course bigger than about a five by five. So it's not that difficult to set up a problem where you can do the calculation, set it up for a couple of particular cases, three, four, five dimensional matrices, and then not need to go any further than that. So let's start with a three by three case. So we're going to enter the um, our, the sort of in, uh, example matrix into our Excel table. And so the general idea here is let's come up with, again, some terms to calculate with 1, 8, uh, minus 5, uh, 0, minus 2, 3. So here's our matrix. We want to calculate the determinant of it. Now, I'm going to do this basically kind of the way that we would do this by hand in stages, and then we will go from there. So first, I'm going to calculate just the, and I'm going to expand on the top row by default, because once you put this formula into Excel, uh, you don't have to ever mess with it again. So my first position is going to be top entry of the matrix. And then I'm going to calculate my two by two determinant for um, the, uh, you know, blocking out the first row, blocking out the first column, and then whatever is left. So here's my sub matrix determinant. It goes with that. And then our next component, it's going to be minus our J component or our second position component. And then again, we calculate the determinant by blocking out this column and this row. So that's gonna be this entry times this entry minus this entry times this entry. And then our fifth component, our five, five, K component, uh, the third entry of our top row, and then block out and calculate the determinant for here and here minus here times here. And then we finish the determinant calculation. The determinant is going to be this entry times this entry plus, because I already incorporated the sign into the formula. And so our determinant is 30. And again, the, the beauty of this is that I can update this um, formula uh, this matrix at any time. And if I change one of the entries, then the formula completely recalculates. I don't ever have to set up the formula again. Now, if we want to break this down a little bit more, we can to see a little bit more of the process. So if I expand on this top row, what I can do is I can actually calculate my entries that I need and actually put them right where they would be needed for the calculation. And then um, calculate my determinant as a second step. So then this would be minus this entry and then this entry and this entry 
and this entry and this entry and then Now, the nice thing about Excel is that if I know that for this calculation, I'm going to need this whole column, I can just drag it down. And then if I need this whole column, I can also drag it down. And then from here, we can then bring down our value. And then here, calculate our determinant. Here, we bring down our value again. And then here, we calculate our determinant. And then here we bring down our value. And here we calculate our determinant. And then we can actually finally do our calculation. And we get our same value that we got before. But again, sort of you can think of this as one of the advantages here is that in this display, you get a little bit more of the work. So if you need to show calculations on your assignments, you can see where what the work is and you can double check like even your own arithmetic. I didn't get this at this stage and so where is my mistake? This will help you identify the mistake because you have more of the calculation showing. Now we can do something very similarly for a four by four matrix, for example. So let's switch to a new sheet. So let's come up with a four by four matrix. Uh, one, three, negative two, four, and two, one, negative two, zero, and five, one, negative three, uh, two, and six, one, zero, minus four. All right, so there's our matrix. Now, four by fours, of course, are a little bit more tricky because they involve doing a three by three calculation as we go. So I'm gonna spell this out a little bit more than I did in the previous one, more similar to the second case than the first case, just so that we can see more of the work. So expanding again along the top row because Again, we're setting up a formula, so we don't need to like be clever about identifying zeros and things like that. All right, so now if I use this first entry, I am going to identify my rows and columns that I will need for my three by three determinant calculation. Okay, great. So then I go to the next entry on the top row. And so now I'm going to need row A. Oops. And I'm going to need row C. And I'm going to need row D. And then the next position is this guy. And I'm going to need, oops, 
row A. And I'm going to need B. And I'm going to need D. And now I'm going to need position D. And I'm going to need column A. And column B. And column C. Now, at this level of zoom, of course, it doesn't all fit on the screen, so that's fine. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to break down this calculation into some additional stages. So our three by threes have to be broken down into two by twos. So the next thing is going to be everything still gets multiplied by one, in this case, by this entry. But now we're also going to have to calculate our sort of sub matrices. So I'm gonna put that on a row, a level down. And so again, expanding on the top row, we're gonna have this guy. And then, oops. And then we're going to calculate our determinant, this guy times this guy. Uh, actually, let me just copy it down so that we can um, break it down uh, it didn't quite work as well as I had hoped <laughs> the sometimes the uh, Excel references in Excel can be a little um, under the radar and then next entry and then that one and that one, and that one, and that one, and then next entry, oops, that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. And that one. Now, over here, we want to bring this guy down. But the relative positions of all of our calculations for this matrix are going to be the same as for this matrix. So we should be able, again, using that relative cell references, which messed us up so much before, should be correct now. So here's our top row expanding 311. And then here is our second column and our fourth, co our third column. And here's our first column and our third column. And here's our first column and our second column. Great. So then I can do the same thing. So over here, I am going to, uh, not that position, I'm going to, Right here, I'm going to bring down that guy. And over here, I'm going to bring down my previous multiplier. And I'm going to copy all of these entries because the relative positions will update. And I'm going to copy them over here too. And again, you can double check 115, second, third, first, third, first, and second. Does that all work? And so now what we can do is we can do our determinant calculators. So that guy times that guy minus that guy times that guy. And the next position is that one times that one 
minus that one times that one and this one is this one times this one minus this one times this one and then finally we can start combining our levels so level one it's this one times this one minus this one times this one plus this one times this one. And then we would multiply this stage by that one. And then these calculators, as long as I line them up, they should all update. So let's just double check. This particular cell reference, that is this one times this one, and this one times that one, that's correct. And then, and then over here, again, lining up, And copy, and copy, and copy, and copy. All right. So remember, right now we're at this stage down here at this row, 21. And what we have to remember is when we expanded our matrix, so just like I did here, um, I put the minus sign in here instead of in this coefficient. You can do either one, just make sure that you remember what you've done. Now, when we expanded the four by four, I didn't put the minus sign here. So I will put those into my final formula. The determinant is going to be this entry. Well, I've already calculated the multiplying here. So it'll be this one minus this one plus this one minus this one. And we got a determinant of 90. And we could go into a traditional calculator and try to verify that this is in fact set up correctly. And I did find a typo when I was setting up our fourth matrix over here. Um, I had originally put A1 and C1, and that's not right. You have to start with, you skip the top row, and you end up, you start with A2, A3, A4, B2, B3, B4, C2, C3, C4. Again, the nice thing about the formulas is that um, you can, you have to have 1D in each of the entries and then A, B, C. And if this is a one, then these have to be two, three, four. Again, you can expand on any row or column, but there has to be this um, sort of, you have to account for all of the letters and numbers at some place. And so I fix that formula. And what we end up with then is a slight adjustment to this piece and a slight adjustment uh, and we end up with a determinant of not 90, but 120. And again, the beauty of this is that once you get the formula set up, you never have to do it again. You save it, and then you can just change the entries in your matrix, and the calculator will automatically redo the formula. So if I change that to a 1, notice everything changed. If I change this to a minus five instead of a minus four, everything changes. So everything updates as you make 
those revisions. And so what you do is you set this up one time and then you save it so that you can always use it. And um, having all this, the steps spelled out like this means that you can check every step of the calculation. Uh, it's very easy when you're doing a lot of these by hand, doing these cofactor expansions that um, you will lose a minus sign or something like that. And so once you set up the formula, you know that it works, then you're free to go on and um, never have to set it up again. You can always have expect Excel to do a better job of keeping track of those minus signs than you will. And so if you lose it, um, if you lose one, you'll be able to identify at the, the stage at which you lost it, which one of your calculations is incorrect and you can backtrack to figure out where that is, uh, which can be really helpful for sort of learning how to not only I spot your own mistakes, but to just be a little bit more careful when you're executing the process. Uh, and again, the nice thing is in a TI, you would have to redo all of the entries all over again, and you just type over them here, much easier than typing with your thumbs on your TI. Um, now I'm not gonna set up the, the five to five by five one, but the five by five one, would basically incorporate the same general idea. You would set up the five by five, and then you would break it out into your four by fours, and then break those down into your three by threes, and then break those those down further into your two by twos. And then finally, you can do your entire calculation from there.